Hi there, Tracy Brown. And so I thought I would take some time. I'm waiting for actually an appointment to um, talk to a group of dietitians about health at every size and intuitive eating. I'll actually let you go, let you all know how that meeting went after I get done with it. So either later today or tomorrow. But I, this has been on my mind for weeks, and I wanted to talk about it in more depth just because I, I've never taken the time to just clearly discuss this and where I stand. So I want to talk about being a good ally and acknowledging maybe where we have privilege in this whole um, recovery from eating and weight concerns journey. So um, part of my eating disorder had a lot to do with um, just my rebellion and I didn't have the right words and I certainly didn't have a lot of tools to articulate my honestly pissed offness at the way that we treat each other. So I remember long before um, I got really caught up in diet culture, I was really always just in this angsty place as a kid and a, a young adolescent of just observing how people treat each other, how families treat each other, even though we love each other. And you know, I was just one of those kids that was, and people, adult, that is really sensitive and highly aware of what's going on around me and feeling into the, the reasons why people do what they do. I can see the depths of it and how complicated it is. And so when you don't have tools to make sense of me that when you're young, um, you look for something else because that can be overwhelming. So hence part of the reason I developed eating disorder in the first place. And so particularly for me, as I got later on in high school and started having um, you know, interactions and, and with people and um, in more grown up kind of ways and even in dating, I could see how much there was this dynamic of it being okay for, um, you know, essentially, um, you know, as a female, I basically would fall into two camps, either a person who would put out or a person who wouldn't. And I didn't at all feel ready for those kind of interactions. And so that put me in that camp of not being very dateable. And I was really upset about this because I just wanted to be like everybody else and maybe have somebody to hang out with that I was really into and, but didn't want to go that far. And I found that like, if I didn't, I wasn't going to be treated as well or left to the side and I was really, um, you know, just devastated by this as most of us have been and are and it turned into me feeling like, oh, if this is the way it's going to be, I don't want any part of it. If I'm going to grow up in a culture that just values me as an object um, and something to use and then talk about, then I want no part of it. So me restricting and over exercising had so much to do with opting out because I didn't know how to speak up or say anything about that and I certainly wasn't ready or willing to risk saying no you can't treat me that way and that's wrong and I didn't know how to do that so diet culture was one of those things that I grabbed onto because other people around me were doing it and it looked like the way to um, be attractive and acceptable and so it really didn't have as much to do about weight in the beginning. I mean, it, it did in a way of like, this is a way I can also manage not growing up and having to deal with um, the judgment that comes along with if you have even um, an average size body, let alone a large size body. So it was really a preemptive strike against growing up and getting bigger um, and having to deal with that, as well as I didn't want to participate in being wanted. Um, and so I'll make myself inaccessible. So all those were my ways of, of getting away from that. And the point of all this is around, you know, privilege and um, being a good ally is that um, as I started re to recover, I knew um, just based on like my family and my genetics, I probably wasn't going to um, recover into a bigger body. And did it make it any easier for me to recognize that? No, totally not. I mean, every single day I was scared of like gaining weight and being more fully me. Part of that was because of fear of judgment about um, 
just being in a female body and um, all the ways in which that can be judged, but a lot of it just had to do with, um, again, not wanting to participate in the way that would make me more a part of the world because it was just too painful. So anyway, I recovered in a body that was basically like the cultural idea. I'm a small person. And it's interesting that that didn't make me feel better. It made me actually feel more ashamed because I knew that on, in some level it was really a lot easier for me. Um, so I'm really aware of that. And I've been aware, aware of that for 11 plus years now as my professional work has gone on is that um, you, see, you might see more on online circles that people talk a whole lot about um, acknowledging privilege. Well, I've been doing that for years before that became popular to do just because of all my experiences growing up and watching people be judged and stigmatized for all kinds of reasons. Their body size, what groups they fit into, their color, um, how they identified that were non-normative. Um, I recognize those things. So I'm, I'm sharing all this as a reminder to all of you who are watching this, who are going through letting go of diets is to recognize that um, if you have some privilege, be highly aware of that, especially when you talk about how you feel fat um, because there are some people who actually are fat or larger bodied or however they wish to be described and um, they actually have to live that and, and face some of those um, value judgments when they walk in a door somewhere and people might think certain things about them. So be aware of it. And this is not to bring shame to you because I felt that way. So I want to normalize both letting go of having a smaller body, whatever that means for you, is hard for everybody. So it's not minimizing that no matter what size you are, but also recognize your privilege that you might be recovering from disordered eating or diet trauma and you may never have a, a larger body, so um, just be aware of that with some sensitivity um, without diminishing your struggles as well. And so that dovetails into the next point is that um, I do my best to be a good ally to all my clients and all the people online or in person that I don't know, just to let them know that, hey, um, I don't know what your experience is like to walk around a larger body, but I empathize and it's not fair and I'm sorry for all of us for that, that any of us have to witness that or experience that and let me know how I can support you. And so that's what I do. I talk about health at every size. I talk about the research that says that you, just because of your size doesn't mean you necessarily are or are not healthy. And I'm fairly fearless about that. And I think that because of my privilege, it allows me to do that. And so I feel like that's a responsibility. I'm not here to have pity on anybody or to save anybody, but it's more about I can do that because of my privilege, so I'm happy to do it. Um, even though sometimes there's discomfort with that, I, I feel like, well, I have that privilege and so, um, and I can do it and I know the science behind it, so I'm going to. And so I just want to put that out there for people that haven't heard me talk about that I definitely if you're in my private sessions with me I talk about that especially with people who don't look like me that I acknowledge that um, and just want to do my part to help there be less stigma in the world around recovery and what recovery looks like for all people of all shapes and sizes and of all backgrounds and um, you know access levels and that's what I try to provide on my services is a wide range of you know price points that way people can access this um, the, to where it's a win-win for everybody so um, that's it I just want to acknowledge the whole thing of privilege and access and um, being a good ally if you are in a smaller body to people who happen to not to be and um, recognizing that we're all in this together and are all aiming for the same thing which is freedom and peacefulness with our bodies and food and to live just a more full embodied life. All right, well, thank you so much for listening to all this. If you have questions or comments, I love discussion. And if I left out some places where you feel like I could have been more specific, please call me on it. Or, um, you know, I just shared a teeny tiny bit of my own experiences. I didn't go into a lot of detail just because I didn't want to make it all about me. Um, 
so anyway, yeah, if I've left some stuff out that you don't feel like I properly addressed or I left some people out, please let me know and I'd be happy to correct that. Thank you so much. I know we're all learning. Take care.